Hey everybody, welcome back to Half Ass. I'm here as always with Andrew and a big thanks to everybody out there. We hit our sub goal of 2500 for our first major benchmark on the channel. So we hit it late last night. We're going to be going through putting that thing in the, the calculator to pull out who our winner is. We'll reach out to you and then uh, get you your ammo. Bringing us to our next giveaway. So this is from my personal stash because I, I really want to see this channel grow with good content and it seems like giveaways are a good way to do that. And what we have is an M17 surplus. Not your run of everyday run of the mill M17. Um, when we hit 10,000 subs, I'm going to send this provided you're legal to own in your state and you're of age and whatnot. Um, but we'll send this to a winner. It is one of the original 4,000 M17s that saw field testing before SIG was awarded the contract. So this is one of about 4,000 guns ever to hit the commercial market. Uh, retail on these things has ranged over the years, but seems like they've settled right now around $2,500. Um, but really rare, really cool, and a great piece of history, both for SIG and for the military collectors out there too. So this will be going home to somebody when we hit 10,000 subs. So like, comment, subscribe. What's interesting is, looking at the analytics on the channel, only 11% of the views come from our subscribers. So if you're watching the video, you're not subscribed, hit the little button down below because we do fun gun shit here, guys. Yeah, the more of you that subscribe and that like and that share the content, and even if all you do is just leave a comment down below, that all just causes us to get more outreach and for more people to be recommended these videos and to see it. For like-minded people. Like-minded individuals. All right. We'll get this off the table. All right. Purpose of today's video. Mac shotguns so we've done a couple videos on the mac ds9 being one of the better import 2011s out there on the market today i've heard a lot of positive reviews on their m1014 which is their benelli clone yep I've heard a lot of positive reviews about their m2 so we wanted to take them for ourselves and put them to the test and see how they did everybody's heard the uh the dreaded phrase turk nelly yeah so that's essentially what these guns are they are the turkish clone benelli m2 and benelli m4 so for those keeping score at home the m2 from mac is an inertia driven shotgun where the m1014 modeled after the benelli 1014 is a gas gun yep so there's not a whole lot that's involved with testing these out other than shooting a bunch of different kinds of ammo through them which is what we did and that's so we've seen an incredible surge of transfers of these guns coming into the shop and we've even decided to start stocking them and start selling them. And we get so many questions because it looks just like a Benelli M4, except for the fact that it costs a fifth of how much a Benelli M4 costs. I think so, MSRP on both of them is right around 400 bucks. Now, that's MSRP, not, not right. counter price. So we get some of the most common questions we get are, you know, what ammo does it like to shoot? Are these actually reliable? Things like that. And... In my years of working with shot, especially semi-automatic shotguns, I, I, there every single brand, whether it's an expensive or a cheap shotgun, can be picky on ammo. Mm -hmm. So we just said, screw it. Let's grab a couple off the shelf. Let's go out to the range and let's put a wide variety of ammo through these. Let's see what they do like, what they don't like, what some of our hangups or pros and cons of these shotguns are. So uh, we got a nice little spread of light and heavy loads and some common defensive stuff and some common sporting stuff. And we're going to take a couple of these shotguns out and uh, beat the crap out of them. See what, see what happens. We're going to take you to the range now and watch Andrew. Watch Andrew's shoulder just start hating him over and over and over again. Because we ran a lot of ammo through these things. I shouldn't say we, he ran most of it. But we'll catch you back here when we're down on the range. Hey guys, thanks for joining us out at the range. We, we're out here trying out the new Mac 2 and the Mac 1014. Now these shotguns have become incredibly popular. We're seeing them come in and out of our store nearly every day right now because everybody's always wanted a Benelli M2 or a Benelli M4 and this is the Benelli we have at home, okay? Now the problem that people have always had with a lot of these Turkish shotguns is a problem of reliability and a problem of parts compatibility. So people ask us tons and tons of questions about these guns. So we figured we'd get our hands on them. We'd come out here burn down style, put them through their paces and see what they're capable of. Now the M2, for those of you who don't know, is the cheaper inertia style gun. 
Whereas the 1014 is the, is the more expensive gas piston system. So a little heavier, a little bulkier, but maybe that means it's more reliable too, right? But we're gonna find out. We have a whole array of different shells to try through these today. Some really light loads, some really, really heavy loads. We're gonna see how they handle them. Maybe even see if we can break these guys. So we're gonna start off with the, uh, the Mac 2 here. So just like a Benelli M2, all the buttons and the controls are all in just the right place. Everything kind of fit and finish works very similarly. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna try the lightest possible load we could find. Because everybody always asks, can I put light loads through it for training purposes? Or is this the kind of shotgun that can only handle defensive stuff? So we got some one ounce, really low brass. We're gonna see how she likes it. Loads nice and smooth. My thumbs are gonna be sore by the end of the day. Let me tell you. Woo. Spring's a little springy. We should note that these are also unfired guns out of the box. Yes, yeah, both of these shotguns we just took out of the box. Uh, we did not oil them, anything like that. We just slapped them together. Now, both of these shotguns are 922R compliant, so we're only looking at five plus one, but because it's a Benelli action, you can still ghost load it. So let's go ahead. The first shots out of the Mac M2, the lightest load we could find. We went through all five, no problems. Let's go ahead and put another 20 or 30 through it, warm them up a little bit before we switch to a different load. Went through all six right there. We even got a little surprise ghost load. That was my fault, of course. So. A little drop for good measure. Let's keep her going, get her warm. All right, same story with the uh, M2. We're gonna do with the 1014 here. We took it out of the box. We got it put together. No oil, no lubrication. Remember, this is the gas gun. So we're gonna try the lightest load and see how she does. Feeds nice and smooth. Ooh. Ooh. Little stiffer on this one. Maybe the spring's a little stronger. All right, Let's see how she runs. Ah, oh. failure to feed. Fail to feed again. We're getting closer or further. <laughs> That's closer. So the 1014 did not cycle a single shot of the ultralight loads. Now the malfunctions were changing a little bit throughout that. So we're gonna try another tube one more time just to see if it's a break-in problem or if it's just not enough gas. All right, here we go, round two. just can't hang with the light loads. So it doesn't really feel like it's anything but a gas issue, but hey, like Zach just said, sometimes the Benelli's have the exact same problem. So we're gonna go up to a more standard target load after this, a little bit higher velocity, a little bit heavier shot and see if anything changes. We let the shotguns cool down just a little bit after running a bunch of that really light stuff through them. We did get them nice and warm. 1014 had some problems. Now we're gonna switch to some standard Winchester Super Target. It's a little heavier shot, a little higher brass. We're gonna see if we get any kind of different results out of this. Yeah. 
Interesting. I don't think I extracted it. That's a new shell. Yeah. Oh no. Double feed. No, not double feed. Failure to extract. All right. That is a dead round. Yep, that's a dead round. Maybe we had a problem with the shell. Let's try another tube of the Winchester, see if uh, that was just an anomaly. Same malfunction again. It looks like we're slipping the, uh, the extractor off the shell. It's not uncommon for certain shotguns to not like certain loads. We do have the, uh, the more flimsier, smaller shelf Winchester stuff here. This is the cheapest Winchester that's a standard load. So maybe that could be it, but the M2 didn't like it nonetheless. We'll keep an eye on it. We'll see if with other rounds if it starts to do the exact same thing. We're gonna move to the 1014 and we're gonna see if we can get the 1014 to run the standard target load. All right, the 1014 struggled on the really light stuff. Let's see how it likes the standard load. Alright, 1014's not liking the standard target load either, but it did better. It was closer. So if it felt like that really, really light load was just nowhere near enough gas, it feels like we're getting really close with this standard low brass target ammo. Ten fourteen, not liking the target load. Hopefully it performs a little bit better when we get up into the hotter and loads with the defensive loads especially. All right, we're moving up to some high brass, hot three inch turkey load. So definitely not gonna have an issue with gas on this stuff. Now the M2 ran the really light ammo okay, but we had some issues when we moved to the target ammo. I think that could be an issue with the actual ammo itself with the cheaper kind of casing and everything, but we'll see. Now the M4 has not run anything yet. We just haven't found an ammo that seems to be gassy enough. Hopefully we accomplish that with the hot turkey load. So say a prayer for my shoulder and let's get started. This is gonna hurt. I think we killed the turkey. <laughs> Let's do that a few more times and uh, see how the shotgun holds up to that really high brass. Obviously the inertia system is handling it perfectly fine. That is more than powerful enough. Maybe if we're lucky, we could get Zach out here to try some too. Huh. All right, so Andrew's convinced me to come over here and shoot this damn thing. I'm not necessarily a shotgun guy, so this is gonna be awful. Whew, that wakes you up, man. Yeah, it does. <laughs> All right, we're gonna try out the gas system of the 1014 now with the turkey load. We got the M2 nice and hot. My shoulder's already nice and sore. Hopefully the 1014 will be a little softer on me and maybe we'll get it to cycle. If it doesn't cycle with this stuff, I don't know what'll make it run. Ran 
all five flawlessly, locked back on the last one. The cycling felt great. In fact, the recoil actually felt substantially lighter than the M2. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, now that we finally got a load that this thing likes to run, we're gonna put a bunch more through it. We're gonna see how it handles. All right, we tried out the shorty shells. Both shotguns did not perform well. Now let's try some real personal defense, double lot buck. This is what you buy this shotgun for, right? You buy this shotgun because you wanna have that bedside table, that home defense shotgun loaded up with some double lot buck personal defense that can make someone really regret ever coming into your house uninvited. So let's make sure that both these guns do exactly what they're intended to do. M2 cycled and ran it fine. M4 had a little bit of problems. So that was a relatively light double lot buck. If you're gonna be running the gas system, either uh, oil your gun or get a little bit hotter of a personal defense round. All right, we tried out some personal defense double lot buck. Now that's a little bit of a lighter load. It's meant to be a little bit more manageable to defend your home with. Now we're gonna try some full power hunting loads. Specifically, we're gonna try some one ounce slugs, okay? There's no law that says you can't defend your home with slugs. But in case you had to take down any game with one of these, we wanna make sure we're able to do it as well. I expect both of these shotguns to run this perfectly fine. The M2 loved it. We're gonna get Zach out here for the 1014 and uh, let, let's liven him up a little bit. This is gonna suck. Ah. Two more. Why? Why? <laughs> it runs it great. I mean, this thing cycles like a champ. Yeah, this thing has been awesome. Watching it from the sidelines, you can tell that some of the lower brass stuff and some of the lighter load stuff, it just doesn't have enough gas. So we need to take apart, take a look at it. But I think all we need to do is just open the gas a little bit, but, and it should run all that other stuff. No surprise, inertia runs the light stuff and then the heavy stuff, it's shooting shells and they're bouncing off the wall and back across the range right now. So. But overall, I still think these are sweet shotguns. A few moments later. All right, so we finally get back to the bench, take a look at the manual alarms. These things are built just like a vanilla M4. There's a gas key and a gas system that rides underneath. Taking it apart, there was a burr inside of there. So I've got three rounds of that real cheap Winchester Super Target. I'm gonna see if I can get it to cycle. If I can, great. If not, it's back to the drawing board, but not uncommon for defensive type shotguns to not like this cheap target load. They're designed for shot, for slugs and things like that. But we're just trying to see if we can make this work, so. Cheap, shitty ammo. All because of a stupid burn in the gas can. All right, so what you saw on the range was, was not uncommon for what we were expecting. The inertia driven shotgun really liked the cheap, the shittiest low brass, low load, you could find. It ate it up. No problem. Yeah, that typical off-the-shelf cheap it, sporting ammo. I call it the Walmart shells. Yeah, exactly. It's the shit you buy at Walmart. It was essentially Winchester White Box. Yeah. It was a state, but we were at a state first, then Winchester. Right. So it loved the cheap stuff. Then when you got to some of the, I won't call them Magnum loads, but the defense loads, the slugs, the double lot, hated them. Hated it. Well, that's not surprising because it's an inertia driven action. But 1014, on the other hand, had the opposite effect. 
yeah, the gas gun really seems to like the more powerful loads and not like the lighter loads. Initially. Initially. Because Andrew shot most of this, and I'm sitting back there on the side behind the camera watching, making sure the camera angles are good and whatnot, and I kept noticing the bolt just being real sluggish and almost delayed. So we took it back here. I have a Benelli 1014 at home, and again, screw for screw, it's very similar. So I pulled the gas key out, and there is a huge burr, like the size of a small coin, that's on the first gas port. So I took it out with a pair of needle nose, reamed it, reamed it out a little bit, threw it back in, went in the range, and this happened. All right, moment of truth. It runs cheap, shitty ammo. So, fix the problem. You know, we had a similar issue with the Mac DS9 we did, the site kind of eat it itself, whatever else. Sure. But, you know, manufacturing flaws happen. No, it doesn't matter how big the brand is, how expensive the brand is. They just happen. Yeah, and we we didn't reach out to this company and say, hey, we want to do a review of your gun and give them no. an opportunity to send us, like, a cherry-picked gun. The, the channel's not big enough for that. Yeah, we just called up a random supply warehouse that deals in these guns, not even affiliated to the company, and we just said, hey, give us one of these and one of these just for retail sales. So these are guns that would have just gone out to the shelf for regular yep. sale anyway. And honestly, what we saw was extremely typical of cheaper semi-auto shotguns. And a big thing that I'll say is that's one of the reasons why most companies that produce these types of shotguns, they do tout that there's a break-in period. Yeah. And the, these were no oil. Yeah. Ammo right out of the box. Go. Yeah. And... I would imagine that after a few hundred rounds, these guns are going to get smoother and smoother and smoother if they don't die, which we did not experience any parts breakage, any major degradation, any hangups that would lead me to believe that these were going to die at a young age. I think my biggest thing I noticed difference-wise between the two was the M2 seemed to load a lot smoother, more like a competition-friendly shotgun. And the M1014, the M4 clone, it the loading was a little bit more stiff. It was a little bit tighter tolerance. It it felt more like a defensive police use style shotgun mm -hmm. to me in the in the manual of arms, the loading, the firing, and everything. On these two guns, retail price point of four hundred bucks. Obviously, shelf price even here in the store is cheaper. Uh, what do you rate it out of ten? Here's what I'll say about it. One of the really cool things about self-defense and competition shotguns, which is what I think both of these shotguns or their intended market is, is people love to customize them and make them their own, just like an AR-15. It feels almost like you're decreasing the quality if you purchase a Benelli M4 and then trick it out because the parts you're putting on it are sometimes lower quality yeah. than what it comes with. It's the exact opposite here. You can go buy one of these Mac 1014s, probably street price at 350, and then you can deck it out and you can have so much fun customizing it. You're not going to feel bad if you slap a Velcro like mag pad on the side. Yeah. Like you're going to love customizing this gun. You're going to love going out and playing with it and actually enjoy going out and shooting it and not worry about doing bad things to it like you would a Benelli. And from what I can tell, they hold together quite well. And it's a, it's a great platform to to mess with. It's one of the things that we got on with the, the DS9 as well. Do you want to buy a $2,500 2011 and then customize it? Yeah. Or do you want to buy the $1,000 2011 and then customize it? So to each their own. I mean, there's right. people in both camps. And neither one of them are wrong. But I think this is what fits the user. I think if I wanted to really, really build out a sweet inertia competition shotgun off of the Bailey platform... I'd probably have more fun with it starting with a Mac 2. And if I wanted to build a sweet, you know, Benelli M4 home defense style shotgun, I'd probably have more fun with it starting with a Mac 1014 than I would be starting with that super high ticket item. Okay. So out of going, 10. Going back to the original question, you long-witted twit. At, at a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the high end, for what this is as an entry-level 
the Finch shotgun that's gas driven, which is not common. Not common. Or the inertia driven M2. You can rate them both if you want, but overall, I, I know I'm going to rate them overall but together, but go ahead. What's your one through 10? The inertia gun, I'm probably putting at like a six and a half out of 10. And then the 1014, I'm going to give like a seven and a half. Okay. Didn't know we were doing half measures. So, uh, not having as much trigger time, but sitting behind you and then playing around these a lot, I'm at a 7 on the M2 and an 8 on the 1014. Okay. So, the inertia gun runs cheap stuff great, but some of the magnum loads were rough. The only reason I'm a little lower than you is because for a, not as low, but for a very similar price point, you could get into a very high quality CZ or a Stoker. From which we, you know, we've talked about those brands in the past. But. And those are still great guns. Yeah. And it depends, uh, going back to use case, a Stoker or a CZ, they're not a whole lot you can do to upgrade them. So what you get is what you get. Mm. The M2 is, I'm rating the M2 and the M1014 of what they are. But you also have the ability to make them Benelli clones, really, with all the upgrade parts. So, yeah, Stoker, their Stoker 3 got shot, got sweet. But you can't do anything with it. There's more support now than there was a few years ago. Yeah, because three gun, but right, but there ain't shit for a CZ. That's true. There's not a lot of not a lot of love out there in the CZ world for shotguns. Another Turkish made shotgun, but a high quality. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. That's that's the one anomaly to Turkish made shotguns, and I think Mac is too. Overall, I would buy the shotgun. I would take a Mac any day over a Tokarev or a Panzer, or like any of the insert Turkish shotgun manufacturer name here. G Force, G Force. Yeah, you know all of those companies. I would take a Mac over any of those any day of the week. The reason I rated the Mac 1014 as high as I did is because it's a little bit of an anomaly because it's a sub four hundred dollar gas driven shotgun. Yeah, it does. That does unique. not happen often. It very uniquely falls into almost its own category. There, I can't think of another one because if I remember, right, even the Panzers that come in there look like that. We get a lot of those transfers from like Palmetto and stuff. Those are, I'm pretty sure, inertia driven shotguns. I know that before the Remington swap around. Remington made some more affordable gas guns, but not sub four hundred dollars. Sub four hundred dollars, and even then, the the aftermarket available from them was usually pretty terrible. Yeah. So, all right, you ready to wrap this thing up? Let's do it. All right. Appreciate y'all taking the time to listen to us ramble. Don't forget, like, follow, comment, subscribe, smoke signals. If you like what we're putting out, go ahead and slap the like button. Subscribe to the channel. All we do is put out gun content. We rarely do we get involved with anything else. Um, it helps the channel grow, helps put this content in front of like-minded folks, not just yourself, but other people who subscribe to things like gun channels. Um, we have our new giveaway going on because we hit our ammo or our Winchester nine millimeter 2,500 goal. So all subscribers, not just new subscribers. I know some channels do that. It's stupid. All subs will be eligible to win this M17 surplus. One of 4,000 of the original M17s before it was technically the M17. Like, like, follow, comment, subscribe. Subscribe is what we're basing on. But throw a comment down below. Let us know what your take is on some of these Turkish made shotguns. Lord knows there's enough floating around that people have had their two cents with them. So far, I, I'm a big fan of these. We're going to carry them on the shelf because going through them and testing them and everything else, we don't carry junk in the store that we wouldn't trust our, our own lives with or whatnot. I would happily you have one of these in my house for home defense. They're great shotguns, especially for the price point. And there's a ton of aftermarket support. So you got anything else to add? If this video reaches 500 likes, Zach will <laughs> test the next shotguns. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> so excited. So excited. I've never wanted a video to do poorly in my life. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for taking the time to listen. We'll catch you next week.